Hello, it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, and I'm here today with my week of reading wrap up. Uh, this is where I talk about what I've read, what I'm currently in progress with, and what I could potentially read, uh, the things that are piquing my interest. Uh, so I, I kind of had a lame week, I'll be honest. Uh, Back, to, back from vacation and just trying to get into the swing of things, a lot of tumult at work uh, meant that I didn't get as many things read. And what I read was really on the spectrum, like both ends of, uh, of the spectrum of, of, of loving and hating. So let's get, I guess let's just get into it then. So the first thing that I, that I read was um, I listened to the audiobook uh, of Started Early, Took My Dog, which is number four of the Jackson Brody series. Uh, this is by Kate Atkinson. This wasn't my favorite of the Jackson Brody series, I have to admit. Uh, some of the characters were fantastic and great. Uh, Kate Atkinson is known as being a kind of literary mystery, mystery writer. Um, she really is, is great at this, uh, at having multiple characters, multiple perspectives, and you're not sure how they connect, but all of a sudden it all inter interweaves in interesting and strange ways. At the heart of it or the fulcrum of a lot of these stories, whether you know it or not, but you'll eventually figure it out, is Jackson Brody, the main character. And he is a, uh, just a, a funny, obnoxious, uh, maybe sad sack of a, of a private investigator. Uh, he's very smart, very capable, uh, but he seems to always get in his own way. And he, so it's not, this is not a straightforward uh, mystery series uh, where he, it's all from his perspective. Uh, you get multiple perspectives and, and um, people interact with him and you get to see him through their eyes and it ends up being really amusing and, and, and just a good time. Uh, but this one, I, it just felt a little forced. I it got a little convoluted and a little muddled. Uh, it could, now, I, I'm absolutely willing to admit that it could be because of the audiobook. Sometimes when you're listening to audio, uh, it's harder to keep the threads, but it still didn't connect for me. So I only gave it a three. And usually I, I give a, a high four for, for most of, of the Jackson Brody series. Um, but I'm still going to continue because I want to, I'm building to get to Blue Sky, which is her most recent work of the Jackson Brody series after putting it down for a little while. Next up uh, was a fantastic read. And so I need to collect my thoughts um, so that I can be as concise as possible. The book is Flash Count Diary, Menopause and the Vindication of the Natural Life. This is by Darcy Stanky. I listened to the audio and I loved it so much, I just ran out and got the hardcover because I want to own it. Uh, I've said before in last week's wrap up uh, that I was reading it and how I feel very strongly that there aren't enough books about this particular phase in a woman's life, in all women's lives. Uh, this book is just wonderful. It is intelligent, it's visceral, thoughtful, uh, uh, biting, it's sharp, it's insightful. And I think it had a ton to say about society, about biology, about um, about ego, shame, um, what's natural, what isn't, uh, pressure. It's, there's so much in here and it's so craftily, artfully told. This was a wonderful read. Uh, she know that if you're going to read this, this is it, this has memoir in it. And so if you don't like your nonfiction with memoir, heed warning. Uh, I liked it because I wanted to know her connection to the material and I think it humanized uh, the difficult the difficult passages and the difficult portions. But she also does a lot of nature writing with this and she looks at other mammals that have um, uh, menopause. Uh, and so she does a, a deep dive about whales and looking at uh, what menopause brings to and what makes these these whales different than other than other mammals or other animals. Uh, 
really interesting and and i i do love a book that goes in a lot of different ways and can do that artfully i think that is uh, an undervalued skill she does it uh, so this is flash count diary five star read i own it because i want to reread it um and in counterpoint i will be doing a deeper dive into this book in contrast to this book. Oh, what do I want to say about this book? I'm going to do a video about this, about these two books and some other ones. Um, I feel, have very strong feelings about this book and they are that this has been missold, mismarketed and the hype machine has pushed this in a way that I find not only disingenuous, but frankly dishonest. And those are very strong words. Allow me also to say, I do not like to pan uh, books. Uh, I will not, I, I, will, I will tell you honestly what I think, but I won't go into detail. And I, I don't think that my experience should uh, supplant your experience. Uh, one of the things I love about books and I love about reading is that we bring our full selves to them, our histories, our preferences, our interests, our, our, our who we think about ourselves and who we want to be. All of that is brought to the material and then therefore it makes our experience of the material fundamentally different. And when you can find people that you agree uh, uh, with on a book, that's where that magic happens. But I don't expect to love every book that people that I admire like, and I don't expect other people to feel the same about the books that I talk about and review. Uh, but this is an absolute, uh, it, it's not fair what's happening. Uh, this is an expensive book. Hardcover books are expensive books. Uh, and most people don't read at the uh, pace and veracity that booktubers read. And so I feel a responsibility to articulate specifics about this book, and I'll do that in a, in a follow-up video. But suffice it to say, my problems with this book are not only in the marketing, it's in the structure of the book. It's in the writing of the book, the actual sentence structure, the actual metaphors and images used. It's in the research and methodology of, of binding these women and using these women as her, as her points. And it's in the lack of context and the refusal, the absolute refusal to draw conclusions. I find all of that to be uh, irresponsible. Uh, and uh, yeah. So stay tuned. I'll talk more about this in, a, in, in more depth. Uh, again, if you're enjoying this and if you want to read this, have at it. Um, I would recommend borrowing it from a library and not putting your dollars toward it. That would be my, my quick, introduction, quick introduction to how I feel about this. I'll put a, a higher, longer video, more in depth up soon, hopefully this weekend. Okay, that's enough about that. Um, so that's what I, what I finished. I also finished a short story in um, the Paris Review and I put it on my Instagram account because I just was so taken with this. And I think I've mentioned before that I don't always get along with short stories. So when I find one, I wanna share it. Uh, this, is, uh, this is number uh, 229 of the Paris Review, it just came out. The author is Mary Terrier and the story is called Guests. The story is about, you told from the perspective of a, a adolescent girl whose mother has passed away. And within a few months of that death, her father starts bringing guests home to stay uh, in sleepovers. So uh, she's dealing with her budding sexuality at the same time that she's seeing her father act out uh, his grief in, in ways and the implications of that and the women that she meets and uh, her understanding of love and sex and grief and marriage and all that through these encounters with these 
with these women. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. And that first page uh, of of it was fantastic. Uh, go to my Instagram if you want to read it because I took a photo of it. So those were, those were just other than uh, three women, everything else was fantastic. A really good, um, strong reads, I should say. Currently reading. Uh, so reading, continuing my fantastic buddy read, um, Chintu. This is by Jennifer Nansubugu Makumbi. And this is a multi-generational story uh, in, set in Uganda, beautifully told, richly, rich, rich wording, um, very evocative, heart rending. There's so many, so many things in this book that I am absolutely adoring. I think all three of us have said in our weekly update, our weekly wrap ups that we are loving it. And absolutely, it's true. We're 50% in. I check in with them on Sunday for the for the next chunk and uh, just so happy to be to be finally reading this book. Uh, then I still struggling uh, on Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. Uh, have you ever had where you want to love a book? I'm wanting to love this book, but I just am finding myself not wanting to sit down and connect and get back into it. Um, I think some of the challenges that I'm having that could, that could resolve themselves, we'll see, is that this is supposed to be a, a, a letter he's writing to his mother. And I keep forgetting that because it's not, it's not held in the construction of, of the book. And so I, I, I keep losing that thread and then that makes me sus makes me suspicious of how everything else is holding together so i don't you know and i don't mind experimental i don't mind loosely constructed i don't mind uh things like that but for some reason um this one is just it's not holding the magic for me that i think it has for so many others and i'm oh. uh, so i'm continuing on because i want I want to be able to join the conversation, quite frankly, but I also want to see if it if it does resolve, if it does start pulling itself together. So stay tuned. And then I'm also reading Celestial Bodies. Uh, I have that in the other room uh, and enjoying that. I think what's happening though, I'm I'm not getting jumping back to that uh, because I'm also reading another uh, multi generational uh, big book. So what tends to happen is if I read too many of the same things at the same time, uh, I lose. I tend to stack rank in my mind one over the other. So I think until I finish Chindu, I probably won't pick Celestial Bodies back up. Uh, so that'll sit, sit dormant. And then I'm also reading with my book club, my In Real Life book club, I'm reading Where the Dead Sit Talking by Brandon Hobson. And so this was a National Book Award shortlist uh, contender. Uh, for the last uh, prize that just was given out. Um, and I won't say anything because I owe it to my my book club to talk with them first. Uh, but that's what's on, on deck. And then I, oh, I really need, I'm in the need of something uh, because some of the, these are a little slower or I'm reading with other people. So I need to pace myself. And so I have two books that are, that are kind of speaking to me that I might try to dive into. The first one, Gods of Jade and Shadow. And this is by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And it's, oh, that just looks so, so fantastic. I love, I love everything that, that appears on this. So um, Olive just mentioned that she thinks that I'm really going to like this. She's almost done with it. Uh, so that absolutely bumped it up in, in, my, in my potentials list. And then the other one is The Illumination of Ursula Flight by Anna Marie Crowhurst. And I just, oh, a fantasy would be so good right now. And look how beautiful that is, oh, catching the light there. Um, so I might try to dip into this. We'll see. The other, we have two big events that are happening uh, this weekend as well as next week. The first is the 24 and 48 readathon, which I love this readathon. Um, this is where you try to read for 24 hours in a 48 hour period. Um, so unlike some other readathon weekend readathons that happen, this one allows you to kind of pace yourself and, and allow your life to kind of interweave itself with in the 48 
hours period. You just take a stopwatch and and um, and chart your your reading. So I think I might try that. I have a dinner tomorrow night with one of my besties, and then I also have a, a concert to go to on Saturday on Sunday night. So those are kind of big chunks of time that I'll lose reading, for, but you know, for for good reasons. So we'll see if I if I if I'm able to to make that. Um, and then the second one is Reading Rush. So I've never done the Reading Rush. It was previously called Booktubeathon, and then it just got rebranded, and they're bringing it back out again. Um, since I've never done it, I'm thinking I might want to try. You know, um, I don't want to be you know, fear of missing out book, booktube style. Um, so I might try for that. We shall see. Work has been absolutely insane since I've been back from vacation. So um, I definitely don't want to bite off more than I can chew. Um, and I need to prepare for a couple of some fantastic buddy reads that I have set for next month that I'm so looking forward to. So those might be in the works. And then I have a really exciting uh, thing to talk about. So I, when I went to buy Flash Count Diary, um, I went to one of my local bookstores that I love. Um, this is East Bay Booksellers, and I have a special relationship with them. Uh, they're, uh, previously, they were called Diesel, and the owners were interested in selling. Uh, they had a few locations, and so they made an offer to the manager, Brad. And Brad had done such a phenomenal job with what they, with the curation of that bookstore, that they had a lot of confidence in him. And I personally love that bookstore because specifically over the curation, a lot of uh, works in translation, a lot of women writers, um, a lot of African literature, uh, which is hard to, to find. Uh, and I just, I, I just think they do a fantastic job curating the space that they have. And they also do events and they have brought so many um, phenomenal writers uh, and in great conversations. One of the most outstanding ones I've ever seen was uh, Max Porter came when he was releasing Grief is the Thing with Feathers. And he was in conversation with the, uh, Anthony Mara from Constellation of Vital Phenomena. So that already is amazing, right? That's already top, top shelf uh, type of, of, of conversation potential. It just so happened it was the day that the Brexit vote was announced. So this poor man from London is here in America when he hears that Brexit went through. So it was just one of those moments in time type of, of events that was profound. Um, and that's not the only one. They've had many, many amazing events there that I, and so regardless, I'm a huge fan. So when they had the opportunity to, to when Brad had the opportunity to buy it, um, he put out a, a request for support from the community. And I was in a position where I was able to, so I uh, financially contributed to uh, his ability to buy the, to buy the bookstore. And ever since I've been so proud of everything that they do there. So um, I want to make a more official uh, type of support for them. So anytime I link anything in my show notes from now on, it's going to link to their online store. They are independent, small um, bookseller, and they're, then they're phenomenal. Um, I will also link to any future events that they have um, in case you are in the Bay Area nearby or you know, visiting and you would like to, you would like to stop in and the timing works. Um, but, uh, that's what I'd like to do because I'd like to move away from Amazon and, uh, and, and focusing on, on Goodreads, which is an Amazon company and, um, link directly to a small bookseller that I'm personally connected to that I would love to support. Um, I'm getting no kickbacks and no, no favors for this. Uh, it's just, um, something that I, a bookstore that I care very much about and I would like to support them. So with that, I, um, Hope you all have a fantastic week of reading behind you and something, some amazing things ahead. And thanks for watching. Bye.